like to welcome you to the midweek Bible study of the Mount Carmel Church. We are so glad that you were able to, to watch and to listen tonight as we uh, look again at our study in the book of Colossians, where we've entitled it, Jesus is Enough. And we'll be looking tonight at Colossians chapter 1, looking at verses 24 through chapter 2, verse 5. So, let's go to the Lord in prayer tonight, and I pray that uh, this week has been a great week for you. I pray that uh, your week, uh, the weather's been beautiful for the fall, and uh, just how that you've been praising, I pray that you've been praising God for each and every day of your life. And uh, we just want to make a uh, announcement. If you know of somebody in the area of our church, uh, within a, our community here, that could use a Thanksgiving meal. We are doing what we call Thanksgiving outreach on Thanksgiving morning, and we're providing uh, Thanksgiving meals to all those that uh, maybe just a, a, would be an encouragement to them or could use a meal, whether it be a person or a family. We are providing those. They're all takeout, and we'll be uh, delivering them. And uh, so if you know somebody that could use a meal, uh, please don't hesitate to call 814-277-4435. If I'm there at the church, I'll answer the phone. If not, leave a message and I'll call you back. But uh, please be praying about that. We like to reach out into our community here at the church. And this is one way that we can reach out and to uh, just be an encouragement to some that, that maybe that time of year is a little tough time. Or maybe they're all alone. So please remember that. Well, let's have a word of prayer, and, um, and then we'll look at God's Word. Dearly Father, we thank you for tonight. We thank you for our time that we can come to you and to uh, study your Word. I thank you for the book of Colossians, Lord, and as we've been looking at how that you are enough in our lives, Lord. There is so many people today that are looking for so much in so many different directions, Lord. And many of those directions is walking away from you or walking in a different direction. And Lord, we just ask for your continued guidance and direction in our lives. We pray, Lord, for our Bible study tonight as we look at these verses. And Lord, as we work our way through just this whole area of our lives and how that you can even become more prevalent in our lives, if we just allow you to do that. Lord, you are there. It's us that pulls back. But Lord, we pray for our study tonight. We pray for this passage of Scripture that we'll be looking at this week and next week. And Lord, we especially look for guidance and direction in all that is said and done. But we also pray, Lord, for those that are watching and listening tonight that may have some health issues. Lord, you know each and every health issue. You know each and every life that is watching, Lord. You know everything about them. And, and we just pray tonight, Lord, for continued guidance and direction in their lives. We pray as a church family, as we think of this Thanksgiving outreach, Lord, that we would reach out to many in our community. And Lord, that you would guide us in that, that outreach, Lord, and that uh, many would be blessed by that day. And Lord, one of the toughest things in, in providing meals is for people to realize that other people want to help and other people want to be an encouragement. And Lord, I just pray for open hearts and I pray as a church that we would be stepping out and reaching those hearts that are around us and those families. And we pray all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. So as we're looking tonight, we want to look at this these passages of Scripture and starting in verse 24 of chapter 1. And actually going through chapter 2, verse 5. Now we won't get to all of that in our study tonight, or uh, we'll be looking at it over the next couple of weeks. But does anybody ever ask you, or have you ever thought in your life, what's my purpose? What's my purpose? You know, I think as we understand the importance of Christ and who Christ is in our lives, it will help us to understand that as we grow closer in, a, in our friendship and our relationship with Him, that it's important for us to mature in our faith. 
And by maturing, then, we can work towards becoming all that God desires for us to be. So we want to look over the next couple of weeks of kind of discovering our purpose. Or what is my purpose? What is, what is about our lives as Christ is there, you know, what's my purpose in life? I thought of a, a really cute little... Uh, story, I guess I call it. It was a story that I ran across, and I'd like to share it with you. It's kind of a, an illustration. But a truck driver was hauling a, a load of 500 penguins to the zoo. And unfortunately, his truck broke down on the way to the zoo. Well, he eventually was able to wave down a, another truck that was empty, and he offered the driver $500 to take the penguins to the zoo. Well, as we, we see that and think about that, what a funny sight that is and, and what a funny sight that would be. Well, the next day, the, the first truck driver got his truck fixed and he drove into this town and he couldn't believe his eyes. As he was driving into town, just ahead of him, he saw the second truck driver that he had given the $500 to crossing the road with the 500 penguins waddling single file behind him. We jumped out of his truck right away and he ran up to the guy and said, What's going on? I, I gave you $500 to take these penguins to the zoo. To which the other truck driver responded, I did take them to the zoo, but I had enough money left over, so now we're going to the movies. You know, that guy, that truck driver, I know it's kind of a silly illustration, but that guy, that, that truck driver didn't fully understand what he was supposed to be doing. Well, unfortunately, many believers today are fuzzy. They're, they're not sure about their sense of purpose. Well, the last few weeks we focused on the ultimate question of our lives. You remember that question? We looked at the supremacy of Christ over creation and His church. And we ended with a challenge, a challenge truly to each and every one of us, to make sure that Jesus occupies first place in each of our lives. So as we come to the next section of Colossians, we'll discover our reason for living. Colossians chapter 1 verse 24 through chapter 2 verse 5 answers that very question. It answers the question, now that Jesus is supreme in my life, what is my purpose as a believer? So follow along as I read this, this passage of scripture starting in Colossians chapter 1 and reading, starting in verse 24 through chapter 2, verse 5. Follow along as I read. Colossians chapter 1, starting in verse 24 through chapter 2, verse 5. I now rejoice in my suffering for you and fill up in my flesh what is lacking in the afflictions of Christ for the sake of his body, which is the church of which I became a minister according to the stewardship from God, which was given to me for you to fulfill the word of God, the mystery which has been hidden for, from ages and from generations, but now has been revealed to his saints. To them God willed to make known, which are the riches of the glory of this mystery among the Gentiles, which is Christ in you, the hope of glory." Him we preach, warning every man and teaching every man in all wisdom, that we may present every man perfect in Christ Jesus. To this end I also labor, striving according to his working, which works in me mightily. Chapter 2, verse 1. For I want you to know what a great conflict I have for you and those in Laodicea, and for as many as have not seen my face in the flesh that their hearts may be encouraged, being knit together in love, and attaining to all riches of the full assurance of understanding, to the knowledge of the mystery of God, both of the Father and of Christ, in whom are hidden all the treasures of wisdom and knowledge. Now this I say, lest anyone should deceive you with persuasive words. For though I am absent in the flesh, yet I am with you in the Spirit, rejoicing to see your good order and the steadfastness of your faith in Christ. You know, this passage gives us six statements that will help us discover what we've been designed to do, our, our purpose in life. 
And I hope as we look through these six things, it will help us to understand better. Now that I understand the preeminence of Christ in my life, and I make him first in my life, how can I be better used by him? We want to look at these six statements. We're not going to do it all tonight. We're going to look at a few of them, and then, then we'll look again next week at the rest of them. But the first one I want us to see in verse 24 is suffer joyfully for the gospel. Now, we might not expect this first one to even be included in the list, but verse 24 makes it clear that Paul saw suffering as part of the job description of a Christ follower. Look at verse 24, I now rejoice in my suffering for you and fill up in my flesh, which is lacking in the afflictions of Christ for the sake of his body, which is the church. You know, Paul willingly and joyfully suffered on behalf of others for the sake of the gospel, God's word. That little word now that we read, I now rejoice, does more than just provide a transition from what we have been reading in the last little bit, the preeminence of Christ to now, but it says, I now. You know, Paul's rejoicing because of what he has just written, and he's rejoicing now while he's in prison. Think of that. He's writing all of this while he's in prison. You know, most of us try to get rid of suffering when it comes our way. When we're in pain, we want to relieve it. Well, Paul was different. He found joy in what he suffered. Let's turn to uh, 2 Corinthians. The book of 2 Corinthians, chapter 7. 2 Corinthians, chapter 7, looking at verse 4. Verse 4 says, Great is my boldness of speech towards you. Great is my boasting on your behalf. I am filled with comfort. I am exceedingly joyful in all our tribulation. You know, as we see that, you know, he suffered more, far more than, than most of us will ever suffer. You know, listen to what is written in 2 Corinthians chapter 11. So hopefully you kept your finger there, but 2 Corinthians chapter 11. Now I want to read verses 24 through 29. It actually starts in verse 22, but let's start in verse 24, and I'll read down through verse 29. From the Jews, five times I received forty stripes, minus one. Three times I was beaten with rods, once I was stoned. Three times I was shipwrecked. A night and a day I have been in the deep. In journeys often, in perils of waters, in perils of robbers, in perils of my own countrymen, in perils of the Gentiles, in perils in the city, in perils in the wilderness, in perils in the sea, in perils among false brethren, in weariness and toil, in sleeplessness often, in hunger and thirst, in fasting often, in cold and nakedness. Besides the other things, what comes upon me daily, my deep concern for all the churches, who is weak and I am not weak, who is made to stumble and I do not burn with indignation, if I must boast, I will boast in the things which concern my infirmities. You know, in this passage of Scripture, we see a lot. We see a lot that he went through. A lot of things that he talked about, his suffering. You know, before Paul's conversation, he inflicted suffering on believers. And, and think about that. Before he was, um, God got a hold of him, he was, he was producing infliction on believers. And now he's suffering for them. You know, from the very moment of his conversion in Acts chapter 9, verse 16, Paul was told that difficulty was going to be part of his discipleship when Jesus said, For I will show him how many things he must suffer for my name's sake. When Paul speaks of, speaks of that, he, say, he says, Fill up in my flesh what is lacking in the afflictions of Christ. You know, he's not saying that there's something wrong in what Christ accomplished on the cross. You know, as we learned last week in Colossians chapter 1, verse 22, we have been reconciled. In fact, verse 22 says, In the body of his flesh through death to present you holy and blameless and above reproach in his sight. His death has brought us peace with God. 
And there's nothing left to be done except to respond to what he has done on our behalf. The word affliction is never used to explain the sufferings of Jesus on the cross, but instead refers to the pressures of life that Paul endured. Christ suffered in death to save the church, and now Paul suffered in life to spare it. A famous theologian writes that Christ's cross was for propitiation, Ours is for propagation. Christ suffered to accomplish salvation. We suffer to spread salvation. You know, Paul suffered for at least three reasons. First, he was suffering because of Jesus Christ. You know, like the early believers in Acts chapter 5, verse 41, Paul rejoiced that he was rejoicing that they were counted worthy to suffer shame for his name. Second, he suffered because of the Gentiles. Paul was committed to take the gospel to all people, not just to those who thought they were worthy of it. In fact, he was in prison precisely because he had taken the good news to the Gentiles. Look with me back to Acts, Acts chapter 22. Acts chapter 22, I'm going to read verses 21 and 22. Acts chapter 22, and as we, you know, we dive into God's Word and and study God's Word, we find so much, and we find so much about Paul. But in Acts chapter 22, verses 21 and 22, it says this, Then he said to me, Depart, for I will send you far from here to the Gentiles. And they listened to him until this word, and then they raised their voices and said, Away with such a fellow from the earth, for he is not fit to live. Then as they cried out and tore off their clothes and threw dust in the air, the commander ordered him to be brought into the barracks and said that he should be examined under scourging so that he might know why they shouted so against him. You know, we see Paul here. You know, and Paul telling others to reach out to the Gentiles and how that we see here that that. They didn't want that to happen. In Philippians chapter 1, verse 12, Paul wrote from prison, But I want you to know, brethren, that the things which happened to me have actually turned, turned out for the furtherance of the gospel. Third, we see that he suffered for the sake of Christ's body, the church. You know, as the believers saw him suffer, he gave them courage. Courage to face persecution in their lives. I truly believe today that we don't fully understand the persecution that's going on throughout this world. Those that daily wake up serving God, maybe it's a missionary, maybe it's a, a, a church group in, in another country, maybe it's an underground church, but they, they each and every day serve God and spread the gospel even though they know that there can be persecution. Well, that's what Paul is talking about kind of having courage to face persecution in their lives. You know, since the church is Christ's body today, when Paul suffered, Christ suffered. When Jesus began as suffering with his persecution and rejection on earth, believers complete in his continuing body on the earth. We should not be surprised when we go through tough times. Jesus stated in John chapter 15, verse 20, Remember the word that I said to you, a servant is not greater than his master. If they persecuted me, they will also persecute you. If they kept my word, they will keep yours also. You may say, well, pastor, what does that mean? Well, another way to say it is that when the gospel is carried to the ends of the earth, it will be accompanied with difficulty. In fact, in order to share the gospel, it is necessary to share in Christ's affliction. Paul's understanding of persecution, Paul's understanding of difficulty, Paul's understanding of suffering can help us when affliction visits our life. I think all of us at some point in our lives have been discouraged. I think that's a good term for affliction that we see kind of being discouraged with something in our lives and how that 
if we allow God to be first, that discouragement, that fear, that worry, that affliction that we have, understanding that preeminence of Christ can help us get through those times in our lives. We have a gentleman in our church that when he's going through something in his life, he calls it a speed bump. You know, Christ is there to help us get through those speed bumps in our life. You know, verse 24 reminds us to suffer joyfully for the gospel. In order to do so, we must keep the following things in mind. Suffering is part of discipleship. Christ's followers are recognized by the trials they endure because they follow a suffering Savior. I think of a verse in 1 Peter chapter 4, verse 12 that says, 1 Peter 4, 12, Beloved, do not think it strange concerning the fiery trials which is to try you, as though some strange thing happened to you. We know Jesus best when we suffer with him. You know, we studied the book of Philippians, in Philippians chapter 3, verse 10, a verse comes to mind, that I may know him in the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his sufferings being conformed to his death. Something that we don't often think about, but suffering is a privilege. And we see that in 1 Peter chapter 4, verse 13. But rejoice to the extent that you partake of Christ's suffering that when his glory is revealed, you may also be glad with exceeding joy. You know, suffering produces greater faith and accelerates character development. Romans chapter 5, verses 3 and 4 says, And not only that, but we also glory in tribulation, knowing that tribulation produces perseverance, and perseverance character, and character hope. Think of that verse again as I just read it. Romans chapter 5, verses 3 and 4. And not only that, but we also glory in tribulation. Knowing, that word knowing there, that tribulation produces perseverance. And perseverance, character, and character hope. You know, how far are you willing to go in suffering for the gospel? You know, most of us, frankly, would be better off if we faced some persecution, wouldn't we? I think we, in our lives, a lot, don't realize the persecution that's going on. We don't realize everything that's happening around us. And how importantly it is for us to think of that and understand persecution in our lives. You know, we look at the second purpose statement that we see in verses 25 through 27. Serve according to your calling. Let me just start this and then we'll, we'll pick it up next week at this very point. But verses 25 through 27. Let me start verse 24. I now rejoice in my suffering for you and fill up in my flesh what is lacking in the afflictions of Christ for the sake of his body, which is the church, of which I became a minister according to the stewardship from God, which was given to me for you to fulfill the word of God, the mystery which has been hidden from ages and from generations, but now has been revealed to his saints. To them God willed to make known what are the riches of glory in this mystery among the Gentiles, which is Christ in you, the hope of glory. I'm going to stop right there for tonight so that we don't uh, go too far or have to rush anything. But as we see this second thing that we see here, how that we are to serve according to your calling. And we'll look at that next week as we study through this passage. I I hope that as you're taking notes or looking at things that you see God's plan for each and every one of our lives and how important it is in our purpose in our lives is to serve Him, to serve Him daily, to serve Him hourly, sometimes minute by minute, sometimes second by second. How are we serving Him? First we saw the affliction that is there, to do it and rejoice in the suffering. 
You know, sometimes things aren't real pleasant, or sometimes we may approach somebody and, and talk about the gospel or talk about Jesus Christ, and they may turn us down. But continue to pray, continue to plant the seed. Let's close in a word of prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we come to you tonight. We thank and praise you for this day. I, I thank you for um, just the many blessings that you give to us. And as we come upon a time, as we look at Thanksgiving, Lord, how important that is for us to be thankful, not just on Thanksgiving, but each and every day of our lives. We have so much to be thankful for. Lord, I pray for those that wake up every morning in other countries that are bombarded with persecution. Lord, I personally don't know what that's like. We live in a, a world or a country that has freedoms. And we have the freedom of religion. Even though we hear different things taking place, Lord, we have the freedom to express to whoever who you are with us and who you are in us. Lord, help us to continue to reach out. Help us to be willing when we're shut down, someone closes us off or doesn't want to hear anything, Lord, to, to be planters of the seed. Because we do not know, Lord, when that heart may be changed. We thank you for these uh, Bible lessons that we've been looking at. First of all, the preeminence of who you are, holding that first place in our lives, Lord, and making us or helping us to make you the most important thing in our lives and then looking at these examples these things in our lives that uh, will help us find purpose purpose in you and that's truly where we only find purpose and that is through you we thank you for all you do we thank you for those that were watching and listening tonight i pray that as we study this passage of Scripture, Lord, that we would have open hearts for what you would have for us. And Lord, we just thank you for another night, another day that we can serve you. And we pray all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. I'd like to thank you for watching and listening tonight. And as we look at this area in our lives, these statements in our lives, these purpose statements that, that Paul was pointing out, we see where Paul was suffering. He was afflicted in many ways, but he counted it great joy. I pray as we look through these different statements that Paul is pointing out that we see that purpose in our lives. And that purpose, as we develop that in our lives, we can be better used to serve Jesus Christ. Thank you for watching and listening tonight. And if you know of somebody that could use a meal on Thanksgiving and be a good outreach even on your, on your part, um, please let us know. Please call the, the church at 814-277-4435 and we will write them down and contact them that morning and make sure that they're, they're ready for a meal to come and we will deliver those meals. Just again, showing to others God's love, God's glory, and all that He has provided for us in so many ways, and giving encouragement to others. Thank you for watching and listening tonight, and may God bless.